So again, we're solving a standard minimization problem using the simplex method by solving the dual problem. Okay. We identified our pivot position and turned it into a 1, and now we need to get zeros everywhere else in the column. So to fix the first row, it's going to be R1 minus R2. To fix the third row, it'll be R3 minus 4R2. And to fix the fourth row, it'll be R4 plus 8R2. Now we identify a new pivot position. We know it will be in the first column because we're picking the largest negative number in the bottom. Okay. If we divide these numbers into our constants, we have one half times two thirds. We get one third. We have one half times two. We get one. One divided by one is one. So our pivot position is the three halves. We need to make it a one. So we're going to replace row 1 with 2 thirds times row 1 to guarantee the number 1 where we want it. are staying the same. Okay. Our last step is using our pivot position, which is right here to clear out the rest of the column. Okay, so I'm going to be fixing R2 by doing R2 minus 1 half R1. I'll fix R3 by doing R3 minus R1. And I'll fix R4 by doing R4 plus twice R1. I know I'm done because there are no more negative numbers in the bottom. And from here, I can read off the answer. Now, I'm not reading off the answer to this problem, okay? Meaning I'm not looking at unit columns and coming over here to the right-hand side. Instead, I'm going to read off the answers to the original problem, and I do those a little bit differently. X will equal 4 thirds because that is the number at the very bottom of the X column y will equal 10 thirds because that is the number at the very bottom of the y column. z will equal 0 because that is the number at the very bottom of the z column. Now, 
Normally when I was reading this off in a standard way, I'd say that P is 14 thirds. Instead, I'm gonna say that C is 14 thirds because when you're using the dual method, P and C always end up taking the same value and it's always that value in the bottom right hand corner.